Our guest speaker tonight, uh, he's a naturalist, an environmentalist who uh, champions causes both at the local and worldwide level. Uh, he also maintains uh, a web presence, uh, Nature Walks with Mark. Dot org that contains a lot of his work, films, links, important uh, creation, environmental issue information. He also maintains a Facebook, surprise, and Twitter. Uh, we as a Open Space Committee have had the opportunity to have Mark with us on uh, various site visits. And he has uh, provided knowledge and insights to the ecosystems that really truly are amazing. And at this time, I'd like to welcome Mark Fraser. Hi, folks. How are you doing tonight? You know, I'm very excited to see you all here for a lot of different reasons. The most important thing is that for any real conservation to happen, it takes all of you. You see, people sometimes think it's a particular organization or a government or somewhere that actually is, you know, the saving grace for our environment, but that's not true. The truth is, it's all of you and I. It's us. It's what we do in our local communities, whether it be the conservation committee or, or open space committees or trails committees. It's your local volunteering that means absolutely everything. I mean, if you think of it like this, you know, we live in every community, right? There's here in Draken, we represent the streets and the neighborhoods and the towns, right? And, and there's people in every neighborhood. So if we excite the public, excite the people in each of these different locations, that means we have conservation warriors at all these different places helping out those local habitats. And, you know, what I find the biggest thing is really is just understanding what a local habitat really is, right? There's things like vertical pools. Does it, everyone know what a vertical pool is? Show of hands, we got a few, a few. It's a decent amount, it's about, you know, let's say 20%. So that's like a census, right? So, you know, if, if, if there were 100 people in the room, that means that, you know, 20 knew what a ver vernal pool and 80 didn't, right? A vernal pool is a temporary body of water that's in the forest, like in the spring when, when the snowfall happens. And some folks incorrectly think because it's not a permanent body of water that it doesn't matter or that it's not important, but actually nothing's further from the truth. It's absolutely vital for the ecosystem. The reason being is that there's a lot of species like spotted salamanders, for example, that only have their babies in places where there aren't fish. So if it was a permanent body of water, there'd be fish and there wouldn't be the salamander. And how do you know when something's broke when you don't know what it's supposed to look like when it's fixed, right? You know, you get out to a brook and you see with your own eyes, you see what the forest looks like, you see the fish or you see the different species, and when you get to know that on a personal level, then you'll understand when it's not right, when there's change. Change can be in the form of pollution. It can be in the form of acid rain. It can be in the form of invasive species. You know, does everybody remember learning about Pangea in school when all the continents were combined? You know, today we have what I would call a virtual Pangea. And the other thing is that, you know, to connect the different watersheds, it's vital. You know, a lot of species, you know, just, just imagine like a rotary. It's a great example. If you were a salamander and you lived in a rotary, you know, the world around you is happening, you don't know. And one day you decide, there's no mates here in my island, in my place, and I decide I'm going to try to get out of here so I can go out to, you know, find a mate. Well, the problem is, is they leave that center little patch in between the rotary. They, they try to crawl out, and like there'll be hay bales nowadays with the black plastic. You know what I'm talking about when they do construction sites nowadays? Right? Now, all of a sudden, Thump, there's a wall there. So we, what we do is we create a little mini extinction in these little tiny islands, right? And you think of a rotary, that's what happens. You're creating a lack of biodiversity, and eventually that can kind of shrink down, and the amount of available mates or different species kind of dwindles, and eventually it just kind of dies off. And if you can't fly, or if you're a deer or something, can run over, but if you're a small thing, you're in big trouble. And then when you think of an intersection or a road and how a town is built, and the new roads in the town, it's the same thing. It's another form of that, right? So when we're talking about the ecosystem, or we're talking about protecting and conservation of, of habitat and our resources, we want to think of 
that big picture, right? We want to think of the whole loaf of bread. Everything on the planet, including ourselves, is completely dependent on everything else. And a lot of folks, you know, that when they first hear that, they think, well, it's a tree hugger, or well, it's this and that, but it's very true. Everything on our planet is dependent on everything else, and especially us, especially us. And the amount of resources on our planet don't ever grow. So think about that. There's, a, there's only a, a small number of resources that get smaller every year, but our needs as a species, the food, the demands on the environment, whether it be on lumber, whether it be on fish stocks, whether it be, whether it be on wildlife species, just habitat for our homes and all that, well, every year our needs get greater. So the, so the niche for wildlife gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We can't survive without, without a, a healthy planet. It's not going to happen. It's the truth. It doesn't matter your, your political view, your religious view, anything. No matter what, what category in this world you see yourself, it's the truth. You know, we're of this earth and, and, and the decisions that we make are going to impact our future. So making some very common sense decisions about how we raise our, our children or how we, we shop or you know, how we teach each other, like we have these type of talks, this is what makes all the difference in the world. If just one of you leaves here today and switches over to canvas bags, that is thousands of plastic bags that aren't going to end up in our oceans. Our home, this planet, we all share it with every single species you saw tonight, every species you've ever known on this planet, we share this world together. So the decisions we make impact all of us. So whatever we can do, whether it's volunteering or switching over to canvas bags, very much makes a difference. It very much matters every single choice that we make. Thank you very much.